Hello everybody and welcome to Dream Team Tonic. Slow weeks, we need uh, Gareth Bell to, to, to perform some miracles um, tomorrow night for us. Yeah, I chose Jesus. He didn't perform me <laughs> miracles. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is. Welcome to Dream Team Tonic, episode 20. It's our last ever episode uh, on a Wednesday. Uh, we'll be reverting to Sundays from now on, so the pods will be posted on a Monday. So welcome to this episode. Uh, with me as usual is Ben. Are you there, Ben? Yeah, how you doing, mate? All right, mate. And James, are you there, pal? Hi, Tony. Yeah, all good. Good evening. Uh, all good. All good, my end. Uh, let's delve straight in. Um, just a quick one before I start, because I always forget, I seem to forget most weeks, is thanks to Frank for all the graphics of the tables and stats and stuff that all come from ffstuff.co.uk. Great site, get yourselves there if you're a serious fantasy football player. Um, let's have a look straight into our uh, transfer plans, and we'll jump into your team, Ben. Uh, how's it looking, mate? Uh, not too good this week, but well, I've cleared 60 points so far. I've still got a few players to play. I've got six players still to play. No, eight players still to play. So could all change to by the end of tomorrow night. Yeah, uh, Chelsea games going on as we speak. So yeah, we're not too sure, are we? Yeah, 63 points. But I haven't got any city defenders, so that they got they got a clean sheet yesterday, so they pulled away. Um, yeah, good, decent. So um, I've got Son, who looks like he's injured, doesn't he? Um, yeah. And I've got one transfer left, so it's going to be him, I think. But yeah. It's a uh, it's a one game shootout this weekend, isn't it? It is. But, the triple up on the Spurs didn't quite work, did it? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, not yet. Hopefully, something happens tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, Son being out definitely yeah. out tomorrow night. Um, Kane, you'd, you'd like to think Kane? Kane I think Kane's starting. I think Mourinho said today Bill should get most of the game, so you'd like to think they can pull you some points back there. But it would work worth the risk. I think quite a lot of people. Uh, went for the trip up, up in the top one k. Yeah. So just yeah. uh, any uh, any thoughts on the replacement for Son? Well, l- last week I, I mentioned about going four four two, didn't I? Um, but I might do that. Yeah. Bring in Cancelo. I'm thinking at the minute. Um, in Cancelo, yeah. Yeah, but um, or I could go. Probably Rashford now he's back playing. Or with Chelsea's nice run, we've got Sheffield United to start that run on uh, Sunday. Could bring in your mate, Werner. Hey, I'll wait for you to say that. <laughs> It'll be interesting yeah. to see how he does tonight. Um, yeah. If, if he if he does manage to hold tonight, I could see probably quite a few people bringing him in just for that one, one game shootout. Sheffield United. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to see that. We we'll jump across to my team. Yep. Um, pretty similar score to yours. Fifty nine, four points off yours. Uh, Leno, he's I brought him in with one of his subs. He's they just I don't know. They are just architects of their own downfall at the minute. Arsenal regards to clean sheets, so he didn't get anything. Son injury. Um, Werner blank didn't go too well. Um, Cancelo, decent, decent haul of 22. Um, plans going forward, obviously Son coming out. Uh, I've looked, possibility of Mora for one game. I think they've got Villa, aren't they, Spurs? Yeah. Uh, Mora, Havertz against Sheffield United. Mm. Giroud, is, is Giroud going to get a game against Sheffield United if Werner plays? 90 minutes tonight. Not too sure who they're going to play. Um, I might look at getting men, uh, 
Leno out and putting Mendy in. I've got three transfers left. Oh, right, lots of, yeah. Lots of options there to tidy up anything before the uh, end of month and international break. So I'm not under too much pressure, but <clears throat> it'd be nice to have a, a Chelsea clean sheet tonight and maybe a few points off Werner if I'm, if I'm lucky. <laughs> Didn't you put Leno in because of the budget? I think you needed a bit of money. That's why you did it. Yeah, it was. Um, I think that allowed me uh, to put Sonny, I think. Or no, sorry, I put Kane in. Which, um, yeah, I had to go cheaper on the keeper. Uh, Edison. Edison came out. So... yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a sensible option. Obviously, Kane, the first game he he hauled that that week, so I think it worked out really. Across Definitely. to your team, James. Yep, yeah, um, sixty nine points this week. Not too bad. Still a few players to play. Um, similar to Ben, I've got the uh, Spurs front front three. Um, Although my, I, I, mine was even more of a disaster, really, because um, I actually brought in um, Aubameyang for Salah. Um, then I saw he wasn't wasn't playing. So then I then used another transfer to bring in Son. And, of course, Son gets injured in the 19th minute. So a bit annoying. Um, Sonny's probably coming out this week. Um, I also dropped uh, John Stones, who scored. But he's looking like he's only going to be playing... Th- you know, two or maybe three out of four games now. Um, yeah. With the rotation going on there, Diaz is definitely the more s- solid pick. Um, and I've got him already. So um, I've still got two transfers left. Um, so I think I'm going to be taking Son out. Um, he's a major doubt for the Villa game. Um, I'm actually considering bringing Rashford back in. Um, I mean, assuming he's back fit. Um, I'll be watching tomorrow night's game, see if he starts, see how he's looking. Um, I'm also going to be keeping an eye on the Champions League and Europa League draw tomorrow. Um, yeah. That will have that might have a bearing on my transfers. As, well, you know, United could, could go out tomorrow night. There's a, their, their game's in the balance. They, they shipped a late goal, didn't they? And it finished 1-1. So it wouldn't be a huge surprise if they if they went out. Yeah, it's tough away at Milan. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they've got to score. Um, obviously, we Milan have any away goal, so it, it's going to be interesting. Like you say, that is going to have a bearing. S- same tonight, probably with the Chelsea Chelsea game, because that is in the balance with just their one nil victory in in Madrid. Mm. Yeah, going forward, that is probably going to affect who you bring in. Yeah. I've also, I, I also sort of, um, I've got Haz, Havertz written down as a potential option, a bit of a risk, because you know there's a lot of rotation at, the, at Chelsea, but he is playing as a num- as a number nine. At, uh, certainly in the last game, he was a proper number nine. So yeah, um, I th- I think Tuchel likes him. He, he's he's got, he's got some talent. Um, he could be a potential option at some point this season. Whether whether the time to jump on is now is questionable. I'd like to see see a bit of form first. Yeah, um, one to watch, I think. Definitely, Definitely. he's yeah. he's noted down here on on my sheet as well. I can say for that, uh, maybe even just for the the one game punts against Sheffield United if he starts. Yeah, in the cup. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's definitely worth noting of. Hey, uh, I finally got rid of Sterling, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Sorry, man. Yeah, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, with the, the triple up of Spurs, Sterling's gone. Yeah, he's well, had it. He wasn't in the squad, was he? So on Saturday, I just thought, oh, thank God, I can get rid of him now. But <laughs> there wasn't much to, much options really. I could have gone def- with with a defender, or yeah. gone Bale or Rashford, but Rashford was a doubt, so I just went Bale. Yeah, Rashford got oh. over that injury pretty quickly, didn't he? Yeah, and Obama Yang was an option as well, wasn't he? But I didn't didn't go there. Went to Bale. Luckily, well, he's been really dropped, south, hasn't he? On it? The uh, yeah, the, the striking options are just <laughs> don't seem don't seem very good. Obviously, Obama Yang disciplinary issues. Sterling dropped completely from the squad. Um, he he got on for a few minutes last night, didn't he? 
Yeah. Still on the bench though, isn't he? Yeah. Strange. Yeah. I think he's I think he's obviously his form was off. Everything was a little bit off about him. I think he's a bit of a kick up arse for him, I think. Whether he what? reacts or not. What about uh, Ian Acho? Hat trick? <laughs> oh no, mate. I know. He called it with Vardy as well. Obviously performing yeah. against Three Sheffield assists. United. Ah, he should have had a couple of goals as well. He, yeah. he was brilliant. Itchinacho, yeah, good performance. I think that's is that not like five goals in three games for him now. Yeah, exactly. Cheap option. Um, it's I think him keeping his place is a lot depending on Madison and Barnes, isn't it? Obviously, Barnes is probably yeah. out for more the season now. And when Madison comes back. Will the formation change, and then there is no space again for Richie Nacho? What do you yeah. think, Ben? Do you think that that will throw him back out the side? Well, it looks like uh, if he keeps scoring, you can't drop him, can you? If he keeps getting a goal a game, you can't drop him. Not really. Um, the, the, the basically they've just had to keep change. They've changed the shape again. They've gone yeah. to a three-four-one-two. Yeah. Perez came back at the weekend, played in the ten roll. And Tillemans yeah. went back into midfield with N- and Didi, and it worked really well. And it's first time Soyuncu, Evans, and Fafana all played together. Looked some really back solid. line that, yeah, yeah. Some back three that. Mm. I think we said that earlier in the season that once you get them three together, yeah, there's not many better back back lines than that. Center center half pairings or, or center half triple ups. It's uh, yeah, quite formidable. Um, with um. Castagna and Ricardo playing wing backs as well is really good. Was uh, Ricardo's injury out serious? I know he got took off at half time, didn't he? Um, I'm not sure, but I don't think it's that bad. It's it's, still, it's a shame Leicester have gone out of Europe because yeah, <laughs> it, it just takes your eye away from them a little bit. But yeah, it was a great performance. It was it was only Sheffield United though. It, I'd like to see that. Yeah. Again next week. So, yeah, this weekend. Have they got a cup game this weekend? Yeah, United. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that how that uh, how that back line stands up there, and and see how uh, Vardy and each United show. I mean, they should get the space against United. United will come for them, so be interesting to see. They should certainly be a lot fresher with no European game, and you know, with United playing Thursday night. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. Yeah. When is when is the game? Do we know? Sunday, five o'clock. So, so yeah, it's not a huge rest time for uh, United, that is it? No. no, and and you think Leicester are going to go out all out for a cup now? Yeah, obviously being out at Europa League, hopefully uh, cement a cement a Champions League place and a cup win. That'd be nice. Yeah, first time we've ever, if we ever win it. <laughs> Would it? Yeah, because we've been in four finals. And lost them all. Never <laughs> won it. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's jump into listeners' questions. Um, bit of advice for Connor. He's assuming Saka's injury isn't as bad as Son's. He'll be re- replacing Son for another forward with his last sub. The question is, who? Go on, James. Well, I think we've all got this uh, issue, haven't we? And we've yep. already mentioned it. I mean, I'm looking at Rashford, Havertz, maybe Tony's uh, Werner, potentially. Um, oh, yeah, oh not... here we go. <laughs> there's there's not a lot. There's not a huge amount of options, to be honest. I don't think I trust Aubameyang now after, after he was dropped and Lacazette scored. So it's, yeah, there's not a lot. Unless you, I think... It, You've got to, unless you want to start thinking outside the box with some teams that aren't uh, in Europe, there's not yeah. a huge, huge amount of um, um, options there, is there? Of course, we'll have Salah and potentially Jota coming back as options um, next month. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, I would say probably Rashford, maybe, maybe just even for that one week. Yeah. What? I, did, I did receive a message. Uh, what, what, what about. Che Adams, they've got Bournemouth in the cup this weekend. What about a one, mm. a one game punt on that? Whether it, if he started, yeah, he's had two in two in two games, and he, yeah, and Bournemouth aren't the most solid defensively. 
they've been uh, leaking quite a few goals. So yeah, you you'll know you'll know more than us about uh, <laughs> being in the championship, <laughs> won't you? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's true. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, they scored three, I get uh, three or four against us earlier in nice, the season. I think. Uh, nice run of games for Southampton as well. You got Bournemouth, Burnley, West Brom, and Palace. Yeah, it's not bad. So you could probably leave them in for a little bit longer. Um, it's it's an it's definitely an option. It's it's, it's a massive differential. Um, who, who are you? <laughs> Go on, sorry, yeah, James. I was going to say, I don't think there'll be many people out there with Che Adams. No, <laughs> no. <clears throat> You never know. You never know what happened in one game against Bournemouth. He could uh, light it up. Uh, what, what are you what looking are, at, Ben, for replacement for Son for Connor? Well, um, I don't know. He's front free. Who's his front free? Oh, I'm not too sure. He's not give uh, us a. He's not give us that information. Well, I was looking. <laughs> I, I was looking at Bamford earlier. He's got Fulham, and then he's got Sheffield United. Next two games, so if he's back, he's supposed to be back, isn't he? For Friday, yep. yeah, yeah, he he's supposed to be back. Yeah, he could be a good shout, but then his his fixtures change. He's got Man City, Liverpool, Man United after that. Oh, That's straight fine. back out. Yeah, with, with your next <laughs> fixtures, uh, with yeah. your next transfers. Sorry. So you could put him in with, with your last transfer for this month, and then take him out after Sheffield United the week after with your new transfers. Some decent differentials there, Connor. I think uh, if you're just having a a one week punt in the cup, one of them might, yeah, might do all right for you. Or Jesus or Bale. Yeah, they're the it's, ones really. It's gonna be interesting to see the lineups in the cup, isn't it? Mm. Especially obviously the uh, European games this week, but they have got an international break afterwards. You could probably see Aguero starting this weekend for City, can't you? Yeah, that's a good point. Aguero or Torres, I think he's openly said he's going to be switching seven seven players every game, which is an absolute nightmare for us. But I think we've kind of got used to it now, haven't we? What's Except your thoughts? Like. On, what's your thoughts on Lacazette? I, he's another one you just can't trust, can you? Yeah, he's never he's he never gets a run of games like Lacazette. Whether he scores or not, it doesn't matter. He never gets that run. Which is always a frustration. Like, do you think Aubameyang is going to be back inside this weekend? Uh, the, I, sorry, uh, Thursday. I think um, I reckon he'll start on Thursday. He's probably just done his thing there at the weekend. He's been told off, hasn't he, <laughs> for being late? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's telling off. Yeah, it's one of them. One of them lackers that I can't. No, I can't trust him. Can't trust him to be picked. No, definitely. I, I don't like going near him. When he plays, he usually scores. He does. Mm. But he's, he's just getting him on the pitch. Getting him on the pitch, like I said, he's, he's a tricky one. I think any other side, he's probably a number nine for somebody, isn't he? He just has never seemed to nail down a spot in that Arsenal side. And that's through how many managers have they had since like that has been there. I see um, Fergie's apprentice on the next question is asking us whether it's time to jump on the Arsenal train. So perhaps it's now now's a good time to to say, um, you know, is there are there any Arsenal assets worth having? Personally, I'm struggling to to say yes, but to any any of them. What about you guys? That's the tricky side of it. We Arsenal, and we, we we always we probably always pump to play the fixtures in Dream Team. And they've got a nice run of fixtures. But who do you trust to get you some points? You've got Aubameyang with his disciplinary issues. Yeah. So when that's going to be resolved, how serious it actually was, we don't we don't know. Lacazette, he's always a fall guy. If, if, if Aubameyang is coming back in, Lacazette's sitting on bench again. So you can't oh, trust that one either. Yeah. You've got Saka, who... He always seems to look good. I know he's got quite a few points this year, but every time I put him in my team, he just flatters to deceive. Uh, uh, he just, he's just not. He just doesn't seem to do it for me. He's like one of them where you stick Foden in and he don't play for three weeks. 
yeah, I mean, he, he's not. A, I suppose if you're really scratching around for budget, uh, he's not a bad choice for fourth midfielder. Um, but they're, yeah. they're rotating the number tens. They're rotating those, aren't they? They've got Smith Rowe and uh, that guy from Real Madrid, the Odegaard. who was supposed to Odegaard, who's, who was supposed to be the next big thing a few years back. Um, yeah. Those two are rotating, so that's no good. And um, so yeah, I'm struggling with the, their their defense keeps making mistakes. Um, yeah, I thought I thought when you put Leno in, I thought that was a good choice. But since you've had him in, Arsenal keep passing the ball across across their own. <laughs> own box and, uh, I just they just get they're, they're actually quite solid. But apart from they they keep giving away stupid goals. So I'm yeah. I'm pretty much steering clear of Arsenal personally. Yeah, it's the uh, Tony effect that. <laughs> First Leicester, now Arsenal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, the Arsenal train. Uh, yeah, but it's one of them. They've got the fixtures, haven't they? But have they got the players that are going to um, consistently get you some points throughout them games? Uh, I can't see it. I can't see it. Unless Aubameyang comes back into the side, then he's worth a punt through them I games. I probably wouldn't gamble on them until like game week 28 when yeah. they play Sheffield United I wouldn't not not against West Ham and Liverpool probably not no yeah you know what you're saying what about his other, other part of his question Fergus Prentice should we back Yotta over Sama go on Ben well yeah like uh like we said last week, that they haven't got a game this week, have they? Um, they got a blank game week, but in April, um, it's a tough one, isn't it? Salah can just go off and score a hat trick, can't he? He's not been playing very well, though. Yeah. Uh, it's weird this season. You've had Obama Yang had a, little, a spell doing nothing. Salah's doing it. Uh, Aguero's like not playing. Like all the big hitters are not doing much this year. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it's true. But yeah, Jota's a good shout if you want to go for a differential. Definitely. Yeah, I yeah. agree with that. He's. I think um, when he came in at the start of the season for Liverpool, he he hit the ground running. He scored the other night. Um, I think he's. I think he's a good shout. I, I'm. I might bring him in. Um, with the uh, new set of fixtures in uh, April, um, I might even double up with Salah. Um, but although Salah hasn't certainly hasn't been on form, I think I think it's just temporary. I don't think it will yeah. it will carry on. Liverpool's fixtures are getting better. We've now got um, Firmino back in midfield, which seems to have steadied the ship. Um, so yeah, I think Liverpool could actually be a, they'll be under owned because people have moved away from them yeah um you could there could be some merit in jumping on early if you want to if you're trying to catch up in your mini leagues definitely yeah definitely yeah. I, i'll go with that as well um i did take a punt on him in sky i got him as a captain uh over Salah. so i think i will be following probably following suit um in dream team they've the fixtures liverpool um Pretty decent. Be interesting to see who they draw in Europe. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, saying there, James is they are going to be under owned. They've got some big players there still. Still a still a top side on the day. So it'd be interesting to to watch in their last uh, last nine or so games. See how yeah. uh, how that how that pans out. But Yotta, I think. If, shoot, his place is nailed. He's, he's a top player, and he's a uh, seems to. Yeah, just... I can't see him um, being rotated too much. We, we if we if we want to get top four, um, which is going to be really difficult, we need to go on a serious run. And I think we need that injection of creativity and running from Jota to to help realise that. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, he's needed. Right. On to the next question. Question is, uh, Aman Tatler's on again. He's uh, mentioned it. We've missed firing strikers so far this week. Do we look at 4-4-2 more closely? 
and dropping that striker back out. What do you reckon, James? Well, I think if you're going to go for, if you're going to drop a striker to go four four two, I think you need to be looking at bringing in, like Ben was considering, a Cancelo or a um, uh, a slabhead um, from Man United. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it has to be a player that is going to going to going to rival. The, the sorts of points from the top midfielders and strikers, and it's not many of those defenders. But you should, if you're going, if you're going four at the back, you should be, you should have a reasonable amount of budget left. I think if you're dropping a striker, um, yeah. So yeah, get get one of the big hitters in if you're going to do that. And um, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. I think it can work. Well, like you Ben, jump on the Chelsea train. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's yeah, exa- it. exactly the same. James just said there. Cancelo, Maguire, Chelsea defender. That's yeah. the question would be the one, wouldn't he? I yeah. think. If well, you he's go- played every game, hasn't he? He most. I think he might might have missed one, but um, yeah, he's he's captain. He seems to be the. Um, a too short favourite. It's not. There's not many players that aren't being rotated in that Chelsea side. So Aspilicueta, I've not regretted bringing him in. Yeah, I think uh, Rudiger played most of the games as well, didn't he? And then he got yeah, a rest. Right. Yeah. Um, so whether As Aspilicueta is going to get a rest soon, maybe just drop for one game and he might get one. But I think he'll play the majority. Yeah, I think so. I think, like you say, he's probably one of the least least riskiest options. He'll probably get rest, uh, dropped or rested when um, Silver's back in the side because they need a leader at the back, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a calm head, an older head, isn't he? Back there. Yeah. I think, um, I think yeah, obviously, the strikers you've got, Sterling, Sauer, Manny, Son, obviously, with the injury, the the. It's just, I don't know what's gone wrong up there. At first, we were complaining like there's not enough spaces up there. We can't fit enough of our players, and now we don't want any of them. <laughs> now, now, now we're wanting to just uh, play a goalkeeper, five defenders, five midfielders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny how quickly it can change. Um, it's, there's some it switched around, there's a lot of decent options. Mares seems to now have a kind of cemented his place as a a third or fourth midfielder. Um, yeah. As he obviously he's surviving pet roulette for quite a few weeks now. It you, won't be long, boys. You just know it's coming. It's coming it around is. the corner, isn't it? He, he's got. He's going to be dropped <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah, Pep's Pep sat there watching the transfer ins on Mares. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And as soon as it hits so many thousand, <laughs> he goes, "Now's the time." Three weeks out for you, Mares. That's what's <laughs> yeah. occurring. But yeah. Um, there's some decent options, like you say. That Mora, uh, I'm impressed with Mora. Uh, when I watched Spurs last game against Arsenal, you know, he seems to get around a lot. Uh, it's amazing how many headers Lucas Mora wins. He's tiny. Yeah, he scored I, a header the week, didn't he? Um, he's metal corner. It's unreal. He's tiny. He obviously he's got a decent leap on him, but yeah, he's a really small guy. Shot me how many were winning. Um. So yeah, I think four four two is probably on the cards for a lot of teams. You probably see that throughout the uh, top four one four game. fucking two. Four four two. <laughs> right on to Pete. He's asked which team has the hardest or easiest set of fixtures like going on towards the end of the season. Um, I think I'll kick this off because I did a little uh, a little write up. I decided to take it upon myself to a. Uh, decide how easy or hard the fixtures are for each team and score them accordingly. So coming out on top with the easiest fixtures from now to end of the season is Chelsea, in in, in my little diagram. Um, obviously, depending on Europe, that's going to have a big big sway on the players you get in. I think Chelsea's got the total easiest games. And then it's Liverpool, your side, James. I think they're running... Um, from now till end of the season. They've got a couple of tricky games. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And they've got seven. I think seven out of the nine they should be winning. Yeah, I mean, we've, uh, we've got United away, haven't we? Apart from that, 
I'm pretty favourable. Yeah. yeah. So Liverpool are up there. The ones with the least favourable are Leicester. They've got they've got probably four out of nine tricky games from what I've seen. Um, and then City are up there, but obviously, I mean City. Once they once they bag this title, the rotation that's going on, especially if they're still in Europe, is going to be crazy. Mm. So I, you couldn't say for sure if any of their assets are worth um, worth going for. Um, Arsenal are up there. Obviously, they've got a good good set of fixtures, but again, as we touched on earlier, is there players in there that you can trust to get you the points to uh, push you up your leagues? I don't think so. Um, and Spurs are just behind them. Two or three tricky games for Spurs. But they've got the players that can uh, do a lot of damage, haven't they? That front front three is... If Sun's back after the international break, that that front three is pretty pretty deadly if Mourinho decides to unleash them. Yeah. Which sometimes, I mean, the Arsenal game, sometimes you just wish they'd just attack more Spurs. They need to... I think we discussed it last week, didn't we? Where they're not the best at defending. No, you've got them, stri- them strikers. Just go and win a game from the front. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Did you spot um, the um, Leicester's Leicester's finish to the season? They've yeah. got Man United away, Chelsea away, and Spurs at home. It is their last three but one fixtures? Um, yeah, the, the last one's Aston Villa, I think. But that's. Uh, that's quite a tough one with them then going for top four. Um, tricky make a break, then. isn't it? Yeah, tricky one. Have you seen the run in the middle, though? It's not bad. Yeah. With all of these sides, there's little runs of fixtures mm. where you can where you can hop on and hop off. Um, but, no, go, go on, Ben. What are you going to say? No, I was just going to say that that's the run in the middle. That's where they've got to make, make, the, make the money, isn't it? You know what I mean? Got to get the yeah. wins in. They've got yeah, like exactly. yeah, they've got West Ham going... away, which is tough. But then they've got West Brom home, Palace home, Southampton away. Yeah, that they should be winning all them. And then what is the other ones after that? I'll just check. <laughs> when he up to me? <laughs> yeah. So after that, it's Newcastle at home, and then that's the uh, the last three games you just said: United, Chelsea, Tottenham. Yeah, it's a so, good run, right? Bang in the middle of that, isn't it? Yeah, so you middle should, of should April. get twelve points out of that, out of them yeah. five games, twelve points, and then it's, yeah, go on. Might be worth hopping on to Vardy for a couple of games there, maybe two or three games. Decent little run in the middle, um, or even it, it, <laughs> it's your Yeah, why not? <laughs> He, yeah. looked un- he looked unplayable on the weekend. He did. That last, that last goal was ridiculous. It was. That's confidence, that, isn't it? Yeah. You get a couple of goals, and you decide, you know what? I think I'm going to fill my boots here. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there was no confidence in that Sheffield United team, was there? They were, no. they're, they're relegated. They're playing like a relegated team. Right, and on to the uh, dream team, Tonic League, top 10. Here we go. In number 10 is Legend 2, Tom Brindley. In ninth, Dodgy Sisters Athletic, James Fricker. Get in there. Come on. Yes, son. Yes. <laughs> in eighth, we've got German Shepherd and Gary Fisher. In seventh, Dream Team Professor Scott Harris. In sixth, Holdor FC, Peter Brown. In fourth, joint fourth, sorry, is Trent Tenders, Mick Byram, and our very own Ben Lee, Ben's DT Tonic 11. Ooh, gone down, gone oh, down, no good. I need to get back you... up. Yeah, it's, well, we'll see with Chelsea train tonight. Yeah. Got to be back up there. Uh, in third, the villains, Wayne Herbert. In second, the smoking guns, Lee Allett. And still at the top is Fergie time, Andrew Ferguson. He's extended his lead, hasn't he? It's uh, not looking good. How, how, are we, uh, how are we with that postage fee, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Are we good for it? Yeah, yeah, we're all right. <laughs> we are right. I hope he's within the UK. It's not no international postage. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's international, isn't it? Wales. He lives, he lives in Wales, so, yeah, I think he'll be all right. <laughs> right, here, here we go. On to the most owned. Again, thanks to Frank for these uh, 
graphics and stats. Top 1K ownership, James. Yeah, well, at the top, no surprises there. The the guys have been there most of the season. You've got uh, Bruno Fernandes and Harry Kane right at the top. Bruno's got 98.4%. Um, Harry Kane has got 96.6%. In, in third, you've got Kevin De Bruyne with 90.3%. Ruben Diaz in fourth with 858 um, Joel Cancelo, uh, 83.3. Edison, 63. Uh, Gundawan, 50.2. And then, you, then you're going down into the likes of Sonny, Maguire and Stones around the 30 and 40%. Um, I did notice um, Gareth Bell's gained, gained a few extra percentage this, this uh, month. So uh, his percentage is uh, going up. Yeah, I think that's uh, a lot of people jump, jumping on the uh, triple Spurs, weren't it? Yeah. Hunt for the last week. Uh, anything that surprised you on there, Ben? No, nothing really. No, there's not not too many shocks, is it? No. There's um, Mason Mount and Mendy on there. The only the only players for Chelsea Chelsea train. Still, still shocking me that do. I'm not going across onto this uh, this Chelsea clean sheet train. It is yeah. It's that's chunking. the only thing that's, that's uh, doesn't surprise me. I mean that does that does surprise me. There's no yeah. Chelsea defenders on there. Yeah, yeah. It's a slow move across. I'm sure it's going to happen because they just keep 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 keeping clean sheets, don't they? Yeah. Um. Anybody else who's surprising on there? Not really. There's not much. Much shocks on there is the Abamyang there at the bottom of the page, seventeen and a half percent. He starts to sneak into people's teams because of the fixtures, and then goes and gets a disciplinary. Typical dream team stuff, that isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll we'll jump across uh, to the most transferred in, and that's my job, uh, Harry Kane. Nearly 30,000 people putting Harry Kane back in. No surprise there. Um, Bill, not far behind him on 25,000. Uh, De Bruyne, 14,500. My mate Mount, nearly 14,000 putting him in this this uh, week. Luke Shaw, probably. I mean, he was a very, very, very good left back anyway. But he seems to have hit a patch of form this year mm. where he is he's he's up there every time I see him play he's, he's back to his like back to his best I don't know if you two agree he's probably left back best left back at Premiership at the minute yeah he's up there with Andy Robertson yeah right, oh <laughs> steady on steady on <laughs> I would have no. said uh, Justin was up there, but he's been injured a few weeks now, hasn't he? Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame for Justin. He was flying, weren't he? Yeah. But Shaw, yeah, he's he's uh he's back to his best, is Shaw. Um yeah, yeah, good to see. Mares is up there, most transferred in, they'll be happy with him. Them transfers, nine and a half thousand. Uh, yeah. Nine and a half thousand happy Mares owners. Uh Abamyang. Four and a half thousand again. They won't be very happy. That um, was that was James transferring him and transferring yeah, him back I'm, out. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm, I'm very unhappy about Aubameyang. He's definitely on the naughty step this week. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely, mate. Aguero. People taking a punt on Aguero. He's, he got a penalty, didn't he? he scored a penalty. Yeah. Um, eight points. Yotta's on there. I'm, I'm I'm pretty certain that'll be higher within the next couple of weeks. Yeah, um, quality player, very very good prize at two point six million. Um, Christensen, owners one point uh, one thousand eight hundred ninety seven, will be a little bit disappointed tonight that he's out the side with illness. Um, a bit unfortunate. He's been brilliant. He has, and he rightfully has kept his place. Yeah. Um, obviously, hopefully it's just a, a little bit of an illness, and he'll be back for the next game. But we'll see. No, no real shocks on there. Um, I've noticed someone's not on there. 
Go on. Son. He's not on the transfer in list. Hmm. That's strange, isn't it? I thought I thought he, he would have been on there. Yeah, it's true. Mm. I I put him in a couple of teams, so Yeah. I did. Yeah, it's a strange one. Thought he'd been up there near Bale. Bale yeah. and the rest of them. Yeah, good shout. Where is he? He's gone missing. <laughs> we'll have to see. Right, go on. Latest out, Spen. Yeah. How are they looking? Um, Rashford's top of the list. 25,000 people transferred him out to only uh, be bitten with him back in the lineup. Yeah. Yeah. That's a I big one, him, that, I, isn't it? I took him out a few teams because I thought, oh, he's injured. Because you, he was, I think they were the last game of the week as well, weren't they? So you had to do it before. That's it, lineups. yeah. That's yeah. the nightmare. But yeah, and uh, Salah second, 19,000 teams with a blank next week. So that's probably what they'd be thinking. Yeah. Good move, really, because obviously blanks against Wolves. Um, Madison injured, 18,000 teams. Yeah, Madison. Barnes. You go on, what are you saying? I was just saying Madison and Barnes still yeah. still being evacuated out of the teams. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Grealish, 10,000 teams injured again. <laughs> and then you got Sterling, one, one of them, 10,000 teams <laughs> uh, kicked him out. Thanks for about time. 6.1 million <laughs> wasted in your bank. That's it. <laughs> the flying chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not done much for a while, has he? Oh, nightmare. Absolutely. Why have they not got a striker, City? It's so annoying. Like a, a num- number nine that plays every week. It's looking likely Haaland is coming next year, oh, isn't that, it? That'd be brilliant if he did. Yeah, he'll be nailed every week. Apparently, he's a Leeds fan, isn't he? Is he? Yeah. Um, oh, because of his dad. Yeah, his dad played for his dad played for City as well, didn't he? But he played for Leeds when I think he was born in Leeds. Right. And um, right. he played against Dallas in the Northern the Northern Ireland uh, in an international Norway first Northern Ireland. After the game, he went up to him and says, "Ah, we're all Leeds, aren't we?" Or something like that. And then uh, he says, ah, "I'm a Leeds fan to Dallas," and he swapped shirts with him. <laughs> ah, so he might end up at Leeds then. Yeah, if they can afford him. <laughs> I doubt they can afford him, though. Yeah, definitely. Only not. if they get taken over by um, some Ogilark or um, that's rich, it. Um, oil oil state. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Any any shocks on there for you, James? Um, no, I don't think so. I I don't. Uh, I don't think there's any. Most of I can see why people would be getting rid of all of the players on that list. So there's a lot of injured players on there. Yeah, people still getting rid of Liverpool defenders. I see um, Sterling. Yeah, I mean he's been rubbish, hasn't he? So yeah, yeah. There's no surprises there. I think. I mean Cancelo and Ford, and yeah, but I, th- and I think Cancelo was purely for the money, isn't it? Do you not think that yeah. people are getting rid of Cancelo because he was obviously you got the rotation yeah. and just to just to put that money elsewhere. Yeah, he was rested, weren't he, at the weekend before? Yeah. That's probably why they thought, oh, he's going to get rotated now. And he, he play- No, he played against United and missed the midweek game, weren't he? That was what it was. Yeah. And he did play very well. They, they got 22 points this week. You'd be <laughs> pretty annoyed, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. But you could see why. You could see why yeah. he's on the list. All right. Yeah, when you, when we, I know last week he was worth six million. It's a lot yeah. of money for a defender. That I, mm. I know he's, I know he kind of plays like a midfielder, and he and he's one of the top point scorers. I think that people have tried mm. to think like avoid the rotation, put someone in who's nailed mm. for that money. You can put a striker in who's going to score nothing. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> That's what uh, people have probably done. He's gone up to third on the t- on the list now on the points. That's absolutely mental. Yeah, absolutely mental. You, a, a lot of people have probably took Cancelo out, put Son in. Mm. And, and see what situation they're in now. <laughs> but yeah. It's one of them one of them ups and downs. 
ups and downs. You always get caught out by something. Right, the differential league this week, as always, will be updated after the Thursday games. So it'll be updated on Friday on Twitter. Um, I'll stick the latest points, the choices on there. And we will get a poll out for the next game week. James will give me his options for, for the community, won't you, James? I will. Um, yeah, we've we've had a couple of slow weeks. We need uh, Gareth Bell to per, to perform some miracles um, tomorrow night for us. Yeah, I chose Jesus. He didn't perform <laughs> me <mean> miracles. <laughs> he, he, got, he, he got a go with that. It'll be all right. That's a steady way. Um, yeah, just a shout out to uh, the website, dreamteamtonic.com. Got all our blogs on there. Um, the league tables are updated on there. I try to do it as regular as I can. Um, shout out to all our um, bloggers, James and Ben, who do the Dream Team blogs. Keep an eye on their their teams going forward. Reem and Lewis, who do our FPL blogs. Recently, who do our Sky blogs. And we've got a new man from across the pond who's joined us this week, it's Steve. So welcome to Steve, who's going to be blogging about Sky. And... Mike, who does our fan team blogs. Um, another plug for Frank, ffstuff.co.uk, full of his tools. Brilliant site, get yourself across there. Um, that's it from us again. I'll just We'll be back on Sunday the 28th, so it'll be, it'll be posted Monday the 29th for our next, our next pod because we're switching to a Sunday. So it'll just be in time for the international break to finally be over. It's crazy having an international break during a, a pandemic, but it's, yeah. it is what it is, isn't it? Um, so we'll be back after that in time for give you a little bit of advice, possibly um, for your transfers in going into April, which is going to be a big month, uh, the penultimate month. So yeah, cheers for listening. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit subscribe, like, comment below as well. It all helps, um, and your retweets and your comments, feedback, all appreciated. Um, yeah, cheers, guys. Have a good evening. See you later. Cheers. cheers. See you.